Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome back to the course, Practitioner's course in Descriptive, Predictive and Prescriptive Analytics. So till now, you must be very clear what are distributions, what is normal distribution, which is the main distribution that can be said to be the building block of all other distributions. So uh, you have gone through hypothesis testing, t-test. Today in this lecture, I will discuss ANOVA, analysis of variance. This can be said to be backbone of analytics if we are working in predictive analytics here. So the contents will go like this. What is analysis of variance? ANOVA. Why do we need ANOVA? How to conduct ANOVA? I will do this with help of an example here. Then we will see certain assumptions which are taken in ANOVA. Then we will see analysis of covariance, we will see the difference between ANOVA and ANCOVA and certain issues in interpretation also I will give the term MANOVA. So what is analysis of variance? Analysis of variance or ANOVA is a statistical technique that is used to see if there exist significant differences between means of three or more independent or unrelated groups, three or more independent or unrelated groups. So you know this is a distribution, but this shape the first thing that comes into your mind is normal distribution. This is my normal distribution for the whole population. If I divide my population into groups, I have put here three or more groups. I divide into three groups. Let me say there are three groups, three small groups and let me say uh, there are n elements in the population and n1 here, n2 here and n3 here then n is equal to n1 plus n2 plus n3. That means these three groups form the whole population. Now let me say this group has mean x1 bar, group 1 bar, group 2 bar and group 3 bar. The mean for whole population is x bar. Now what would ANOVA test? ANOVA would test at is the mean similar? Do these groups belong to the same population or have they come from the different population? These things would be tested in ANOVA. Now let me try to represent this visually here. If this is my full population and three groups are placed, let me take a different color, three groups are placed like this, this is the total mean, group 1, group 2 and let me say group 3 here. Now we can see there is a difference between the means of these groups. This is the difference. This is the difference in the means. This is the difference in the means. Now, is this difference significant? This is the question. Is the difference 
between means significant this is a question let me put in a different way here so let me say one of my group here is lying outside this population this is a group x3 though there is some overlapping but it is lying outside this population that means this difference is significant and we put the level of significance as well so is it significant at a specific significance level so you know what is significance level if i put uh, 0 0.25 and 0 0.25 here the area here if it is 0 0.95 the remaining area this means it is at 5 percent significant level or 95 percent confidence level CL this is 5 percent significance level. So, is this mean this mean away from or falling outside my population mean that means this there exist a difference of means significant difference of means and do these means lie inside. So, let me take one more example here. So, let us say I have x 2 here and x 3 here however, x 1 is lying inside this is x 1 bar here I have x 1 bar this is x 2 bar this is x 3 bar in this case x 2 bar and x 3 bar has a significant difference from x bar. So, these are lying outside x 2 and x 3 if I put significant level here. So, means are in different locations here x 3 and x 2 x 1 is quite close to the population mean, but the overall relative mean is away from x 2 and x 3 group means here. So, the hypothesis in ANOVA is put like H naught null hypothesis here is mean 1 is equal to mean 2 is equal to mean 3. Please remember we are not saying that they are exactly equal that means the means are similar they belong to same population. Uh, exactly equal means for example, this mean is uh, 9.2 this would also be 9.2 this means also be 9.2 this is not the case. If this mean is suppose 10 this 95 percent limit is let me say 9.1 and here I have 10.9 as my 95 percent interval limits here. So, that means this mean is between 10 and 10.9 between 10 and 10.9 and this mean x 3 bar is less than 9.1 in this case x 2 bar is greater than 10.9 which is my limits here right hand side and left hand side limits. So, we can see here is x 1 and x 2 and x 3 group means we can compare them individually using t test t test hypothesis may be stated that uh, for comparing x 1 and x 2 he can say x 1 bar is equal to x 2 bar 
और सेकेंड हाइपोथीसिस में भी x2 टू बार इज इक्वल टू एक्स थ्री बार थर्ड हाइपोथीसिस में भी x3 थ्री बार इज इक्वल टू एक्स वन बार सो ऑल दिस थ्री मीन्स आर कंपेयर्ड इंडिविजुअली एंड इफ आई से आई हैव नाइन्टी फाइव परसेंट कॉन्फिडेंस लेवल हेयर नाइन्टी फाइव परसेंट कॉन्फिडेंस लेवल हेयर एंड नाइन्टी फाइव परसेंट कॉन्फिडेंस लेवल हेयर ओवरऑल पॉपुलेशन कॉन्फिडेंस लेवल वुड बी कंपाउंडेड compounded error i could put here that would be 0.95 into 0.95 into 0.95 which comes down to 0.86 something so 1 minus 0.86 which is equal to 0.14 becomes my significant level here so we can use anova to test all these three groups together three or more or multiple groups can be tested together so this is what anova would do so you know what is variance variance is the spread this spread this spread from this point to this point is variance also let me say my three small groups which i am taking here have larger variance let me say this variance is large and this variance is again large and this variance is again so where does this bring us to if my small groups the groups are small if this spread is larger that is the variance is larger it is more uh, likely to be within the group it is that is the overlap would be higher if this variance of small groups i'm talking about the small three small groups i have if the variance of small group is smaller and they are away from my population mean that means there is a significant difference and if this variance is large that is trying to bring it closer trying to bring it a little overlap to the my population mean here so if this variance is large so this variance that is in my groups or better to say within my groups is my internal spread or that is known as within variance and for the whole population this difference the variance of the groups from the population this difference is known as between variance between the population mean and my group so this is also between this is also between this is within so overall mean has distances from my groups and my groups individually also have spread so this variability between variance is also known as explained variance this within variance is unexplained so the whole population is not able to explain this so we call this as error so if you recall we had ss between and ss error in our regression so these terms we'll use here to see how does anova work so this between and 
within variance tells us about the significance of difference. So, this is distance from population mean to make it clear again this is within group or internal variance. So, there can be certain cases here. So, we know that variance between and variance within variance between plus variance within brings our total variance in the data. So, this is explained by the data, this is within group, this is not explained by the data. So, if the variability between the means that a distance between the overall mean that I have put in a numerator here, I will put this as a term and put f statistic here. So, I am not putting equal to sign here, I am saying f statistic is proportional to this relation, what is it exactly equal to, we will see. So, there can be certain cases here, when variance between that is numerator is large and denominator is small. So, there can be three cases, one is the numerator is large, denominator is small, other thing I can say these are similar third case is this is small and this is large and remember what was our hypothesis here that these means are equal. So, this hypothesis will be rejected if the means are not similar. So, if the means are not similar what is the this case? This case is variance between that is that is this distance. The distance between the group means and the population means is large, is very large that means these groups are located far away from my population mean. So, what does that do? That makes it not to fall in the population. So, in this case the null hypothesis of similar means is rejected. So, what you will see here, we reject the null hypothesis provided at least one group falls outside and we have small or narrow within group means here. So, if they are similar, similar means if the case is like this. So, what is there in this case? This is my population me, mean if I say and I have three groups here. This is let me say group 1, group 2 and group 3. So, what we can see here is the means are very much close that means we fail to reject the null hypothesis do not reject H naught and we can see overlapping here. And if the population mean is close to the group means, 
So, this is case 3 where the denominator is small that means the population mean is not very much distant apart from the group means. I will put group 1, group 2, and group 3 here. In this case, you can see the dark green, blue, and light green, they are three groups with mean x1 bar, x2 bar, and x3 bar, the small distances from the population mean. However, their within group mean is large. In the previous case, I had the similar means. This is both similar. The spread and the, uh, the spread for both the population and the distances are all similar. So, in the third case also, we do not reject. H not. So, what would be the case 1? Case 1 is population, I am having the narrow or small within group variances In this case, within group variances are small. This is small, however, this is large. So, this is my case 1. Case 1 provided this one of the group is outlier this is outlier. So, these are my three cases. So, my H naught was all the variances are equal and uh, a test ANOVA would be conducted for more than two populations. So, ANOVA should have an independent variable that is categorical or metric. However, the dependent variable is metric. In business terms, if this variable is metric, we call the term analysis of covariance. So, next terms, why do we need ANOVA? Earlier, what we did, we had t test. T test could compare only two groups. If groups are more than 2, number 1, we have subgroups that is internal variance also exists and we will see that interaction. between the groups 
that is one group is interacting with the other group as well. For instance, if I am saying my metric variable is the final marks of the student and my variables are let me say boys and girls is a categorical variable and uh, metric variable here will be uh, the time they spent on study and one of the variable may be they, how much time they watch TV. Okay? If I say marks, okay, this is my dependent variable. Okay, then I say my students, I divide this into boys and girls. So, this is a categorical variable that has two levels, one is boys, second is girls. So, Next is uh, let me say the variables, uh, this is variable A, variable B, these variables are also known as factors. Okay. Uh, time spent on study, time spent on watching TV. So, there might exist some interaction between the time spent on study and time spent on watching TV. So, ANOVA without interaction consider that there is no relation between these two. However, if he spends more time on study, he would spend less time on watching TV. So, there might exist an interaction here. So, ANOVA is used to compare more than two populations and subgroups internal variances also considered there and we can also see the interactions. So, all these things T test cannot, T test has a limited application. So, next comes the relationship amongst the test. So, you have seen t test, you have seen regression, where did we do t test? When the dependent variable was a metric, that is it was in interval scale and my independent variable was just variable it may be metric, non-metric, the binary test was used that was the t test. And if my independent variable is categorical, that is factorial, we used ANOVA technique. And if we have categorical as well as interval variable, that is metric as well as non-metric variables here, analysis of covariance is used. For instance, in this case, analysis of covariance would be used. We have categorical variable as boys and girls, one categorical variable that is uh, the gender and two non-categorical variables which are the metric variables time spent on study, time spent on watching TV. So, if both the variables dependent variable and independent variables both are metric or both are in interval scale, then we used regression. Okay. So, if we have only one factor, we call it one-way ANOVA, if we have more than one factors, we call it N-way ANOVA. So, please keep this in mind, which test or which technique is applied and in which situation. So, next is one-way analysis of variance. So, one-way analysis of variance is a technique to test two or more variables and its influence on a single independent variable. We have one dependent variable and two or more independent variables. Okay. So, there are certain terms that we will keep using. One is treatment. 
treatment is a particular combination of factor levels or categories. For example, if I say, uh, if I made the categories boys and girls, and I have uh, distributed the time into, into a ratio scale, if I say, uh, time from 0 to 5, 5 to 10, and so on up to 45 to 50. 10 different classes are there. So, one category or one treatment would be boy who spends from 25 to 30 minutes. This is one treatment. In the treatment may be boy who spends 15 to 30 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes, that class. The class size is 5 minutes here. And it may be a girl who spends 0 to 5 minutes. That one set is my treatment here. It is a particular combination. of factor levels. So, one way analysis of variance involves only one categorical variable that is a single factor. And in this ANOVA, a treatment is same as factor level, a treatment is same as factor level because we have only one factor. So, there may be certain uh, examples of uh, one way ANOVA. For instance, do the various product segment differ in terms of their volume of product consumption or what is the familiarity of the engineering students to NPTEL courses? Is it medium, low, high? So, in this case, their familiarity to NPTEL would be my variable and its category would be medium, high or low. This is my one categorical variable. So, this is one way ANOVA. So, I can put it here an example familiarity with the NPTEL courses. Okay. So, this is my independent variable that is familiarity may be high, medium or low and my dependent variable here might be the number of courses taken. If I am testing it in a in a specific demographic region. Let me say uh, in a specific uh, state in Uttar Pradesh or maybe uh, you can say a specific part of the country. So, there are certain terms that we will use here in ANOVA. Number one is eta square. Eta square is the strength of effects of x that is the independent variable here. Strength of the effects of x independent variable on y that is measured by eta square and its value uh, varies between 0 and 1. Strength of effects of x on y. Now, f statistic, f statistic is nothing as we just discussed, it is the ratio between the variance between and variance within. So, in ANOVA terms, in an ANOVA table that we will just see, we have mean square mean square between that is mean square due to x and mean square within that is within group that is due to error. So, what is mean square? 
it is a sum of squares, sum of squares that we did in the regression, sum of squares divided by their corresponding degrees of freedom. Next three terms are again S S between, S S within and S S total. S S total is equal to the total sum of squares, it is S S between plus S S within, just recalling and this is nothing but the variation between groups that is also denoted by S S X, this is also denoted by SS error. So, we call them uh, around groups and this is among groups. So, next is how to conduct one way analysis of variance. So, I will put a flow chart here or the steps here first step is we identify the dependent variable and independent variable. So, please note independent variable comes first dependent variable is the result, is the response here. So, we need to identify which is the dependent variable that is coming because of the independent variable. So, second step is we need to decompose the total variation. Decompose is we decompose into two components between and within. Third step is we measure the effects. Effects of the independent variable on dependent variable here. Then we test the significance. And finally, we interpret the results. See, so, all these steps go in a progression one after the other. So, I will take an example and try to use all these steps to explain how ANOVA works. So, first thing is identifying dependent and independent variable. We will see in the given table with the example which we will take here, what are independent and dependent variables decomposing the total variation is nothing. We say that S S total is equal to S S due to X that is explained plus S S due to error. So, this is deco decomposition here. So, S S between is the variation in the dependent variable that is related to the variation in the means of the categories of S that is with, with the in these categories here. So, for this reason S S between is also denoted by S S X. S S error is the variation in Y related to the variation within each category of X. So, S S within is not accounted by X, so but it is within the category. So, this, therefore, it is known as S S error here. So, as we know that S S X, S S S I will put y here total is equal to s s x plus s s error. We saw these relations in regression, I am just recalling those. This is y i minus y bar whole square i varies from 1 to capital N here. Okay. So, s s x was y j minus y bar whole square 
and we multiply this by n that is the group size. If we have number of groups and these are inputs, so what is the group size? This is my group size in this case 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 group size is 5. If I say I have these groups 1, 2, 3, there are 3 categories and the group size is n and in this case this is for each group j varies from 1 to c here 1 to c is my 1 to c is my number of categories ok then ss error is within group for all the groups so within group would be y i j minus y in that group the mean of that group the sum of squares for i varying from 1 to the group size this is 1 to n 1 to n and j varies from 1 to number of categories here. So, we will use these relations, we will see how the calculation, how the mechanism of ANOVA work in the following example. So, with this I finish the part 1 of my analysis of variance session. So, I will come up with the second part where I will take an example and do the calculations to conduct an analysis of variance.